Is the Armorer the strongest Artificer subclass? This week, we take a close look at this Iron Man mimic to see if we'll love him 3000, or if our interest will disappear in a snap. Hello players and GMs, I am Reese, and welcome to another video by Jetpack7. Before we get started, I just want to remind you all to please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Your little gestures make a huge difference in the growth of the channel, so if you like my stuff, it would mean the absolute world to me if you showed me your support. So, a little while back, I made an Artificer video reviewing the class when it first came out. Shortly after that, Wizards of the Coast added another subclass in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, and I didn't want to just add a comment to the video saying how good I think the subclass is, I wanted to make a whole video about it, especially once I had seen it, so here I am. This week, I am going to take an in-depth look at this archetype to see how it holds up against the rest of the archetypes in the class, as well as the game as a whole. There's plenty to talk about with this one, even though it is only one archetype, because not only is the Artificer a pretty complex class, but the Armorer is arguably the most complicated archetype within the class. So, without wasting too much time, let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first thing you get that sets this archetype apart from the rest is proficiency in heavy armor via tools of the trade, which also gives you proficiency in smith's tools or a tool of your choice so right away we're already leaning into frontline caster territory which i am a huge fan of the idea of being able to confidently wade into battle while also wielding some pretty potent spells which they most certainly do is very very exciting to me speaking of potent spells your artificer spells are also fantastic including magic missile thunder wave mirror image shatter hypnotic pattern lightning bolt fire shield greater invisibility pass wall and wall of force now obviously, these are some super strong spells in pretty much any situation. Hypnotic Pattern and Lightning Bolt are flat out some of the strongest third level spells in the game, so gaining access to them at all times is really, really amazing. These are definitely combat focused spells, which lends itself very well to the idea of this archetype and being an absolute force of mechanical nature in a fight. This archetype is also pretty front loaded, because also at third level we gain Arcane Armor, which allows you to use an action to turn a suit of armor you are wearing into Arcane Armor, which gives a few benefits. First of all, if that armor has a strength requirement, you ignore it. Plate on a squishy caster? Done. You can use it as a spellcasting focus. Hands? Who needs them? I'll cast from my chest, thank you very much. It cannot be removed and replaces missing limbs, I suppose this is mostly for flavor, but that's cool anyway, and then you can doff or don the armor as an action. This is honestly really great, because if you get ambushed while you're sleeping or whatever, you only have to spend one action to get armored up as usual, whereas your normal plate-wearing companions would have to spend 10 minutes, so basically if you're ambushed in the middle of the night wearing plate, you just can't wear armor during that fight. Did I mention this archetype is front-loaded? Because that's not all you get at third level. You may also choose between two models of armor which serve very, very different purposes. The Guardian Armor gives you Thunder Gauntlets, which are simple melee weapons that deal 1d8 thunder damage on a hit, and any creature hit by it has disadvantage on attack rolls against targets other than you until the start of your next turn. Oh, and I forgot to mention, both of these armors also allow you to use your Intelligence modifier instead of Strength or Dexterity for attack and damage rolls. So there's that. You also gain something called Defensive Field, which allows you to use a bonus action to gain temp HP equal to your Artificer level. You can do that a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus between long rests. A bonus action to just automatically gain at least 3 temp HP at least 3 times a day? No complaints there. So let's just talk about this Guardian Armor for a moment. This armor essentially allows you to play this beefy frontline tank without having to invest your high stats in strength or dexterity, which means not only are you going to have a lot of survivability in these fights because of the temp HP and high AC, you also have plenty of powerful spell casting to make you even more of a menace in combat. This removes a lot of the weakness of playing a spellcaster in the first place. It's not like you have to wade into the fight and play risky, even though it may be better to do so. You could also play a bit further back and just be extremely difficult to kill while also dishing out huge spells. The other armor you gain access to is called the Infiltrator. The Infiltrator plays a bit more like a dexterity class than the Guardian, granting you access to a thing called a Lightning Launcher, which is a ranged weapon with a range of 90 feet and a long range of 300 feet, dealing 1d6 lightning damage on a hit. Once per turn, you can also choose to deal an extra 1d6 d6 damage to the targeted creature. 90 feet is a pretty long range, so this weapon is definitely a powerful little ranged attack. Keep in mind that these are weapons, so they will also deal your intelligence modifier and damage in addition to the dice that you roll. You also gain an extra 5 feet of movement, and you gain advantage on stealth checks. The cool thing is, if the armor you put on would normally give you disadvantage on stealth, this armor will negate that and just make it a normal roll. 
So the Infiltrator definitely doesn't offer as much survivability as the Guardian Armor does, but I think I like it a little bit more. Having access to a pretty long-ranged attack as well as a bit of extra mobility and advantage on stealth just gives you so many options. The thing is, you can choose which one you want whenever you finish a short or long rest. So if you want to swap out from Guardian to Infiltrator when you have a little stealth operation coming up, you can easily do that as long as you have time to take a short rest beforehand. And finally, that is all we get at third level. Just starting off, I can say with absolute confidence that this is just flat out one of the strongest level 3s in the game. You get so much from just the very beginning of this archetype, so I could honestly see a lot of value in taking a 3 level dip into Artificer and going Armorer. Not exactly sure when that would be more beneficial than just staying in the class, but it might be interesting to see on a rogue multi-class and suddenly start wading into combat with super high AC. Let me know in the comments if you have any crazy multi-class ideas for this armorer. At 5th level, you gain extra attack. Not much to talk about there, just another attack with either your Lightning Launcher or your Thunder Gauntlets. Now, this archetype is already strong, right? We can agree on that. But at 9th level, that is when it starts to get wild. You gain armor modifications, which may sound a bit confusing because it references the main class features a bit, but essentially, this feature boils down to a couple points. First of all, you learn how to use your Artificer Infusions on your Arcane Armor. As a reminder, Infusions are when you can turn mundane items into magical items. You can basically enchant items and you have a list of enchantments you know. Some of them are custom enchantments that only exist within the Artificer class, but there are also enchantments that essentially allow you to create magic items that you can find in the DMG. This feature allows you to use those enchantments on your Arcane Armor, meaning the chest piece, boots, helmet, and special weapon each count as a different item that you can enchant. So that's point one. The second point is that the maximum number of items you can infuse at once increases by two, but only if those extra two infusions are used on your arcane armor. So let's do the math here. At base, at ninth level, you know six infusions and can have three infusions active at one time. With the armorer, that means you can have five infusions active at one time, limited only by the fact that you have to have two of those enchantments on your arcane armor, which I can't imagine feels particularly limiting at all. That is an insane number of magic items. So yeah, you've suddenly gained a huge boost in strength purely by decking yourself out in ridiculously strong items. You can also lend them to other people instead of stacking them all on yourself, but, you know, who does that? The last thing this archetype gets is at 15th level called Perfected Armor, which gives your two different types of armor a special benefit. For the Guardian Armor, whenever a huge or smaller creature you can see ends its turn within 30 feet of you, you can use your reaction to magically force the creature to make a strength saving throw or be pulled up to 30 feet towards you. If you pull them to within 5 feet of you, you can make a weapon attack against it as a part of that reaction. You can do this a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus between long rests. So essentially, you pull a slightly less violent and bloody scorpion and just GET OVER HERE! No complaints there. In fact, I love it. This can offer so much utility, because not only does it put an enemy in range to get smacked around by you and your party, it can also pull people away from their intended target. The Infiltrator gets a buff to their Lightning Launcher that essentially gives the target disadvantage on attack rolls against you if you hit them, and they shed dim light in a 5 foot radius. It also has that Guiding Bolt effect where the next attack against the target has advantage, but it also deals an extra 1d6 lightning damage if that attack hits. Nothing super strong and honestly probably the weakest feature of the entire archetype, but it's not like you're going to hit a wall or anything because the Artificer alone scales really, really well into high levels. By this point in the game, you'll know 10 infusions, and as an armorer, you'll be able to have 7 of those active at all times. You'll also be able to attune to 5 magic items going up to 6th at 18th level. You can really just be a glowing ball of magic items if you choose to, or you can be a constant source of power for the rest of your party. Overall, this armor artificer strikes me as by far the most potent combat archetype for this class, if not just the strongest archetype for the class in general. The synergy it has with the rest of the class is absolutely incredible and will make you an extremely valuable asset to have in any adventuring party. The power from the infusions and the arcane armor combined with the fact that your spellcasting won't suffer at all due to being able to use intelligence for attacks and damage make an archetype that leaves its options wide open. You can take whatever spells or whatever infusions you want and I can guarantee you that you will have a great time. I'm currently playing with one in my party and I can say firsthand that it is amazing. He can tank when he needs to or swap armors and go more stealthy, not to mention he continuously deals big damage with his hits while also offering amazing utility from his spells. Really, he can just do whatever he wants and that is exactly what you want from a class like Artificer. 
All right, there's the review for the Armorer. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what you think of this archetype and if you want me to do any more in-depth reviews of recent archetypes that I didn't cover in older videos. If you liked this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel, but either way, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you around.